Ha! The lovely FTP test. Yeah, I imagine a few of you just shuddered hearing those three letters, but love them or hate them, they are a staple within most cyclists and triathletes training plans. And there's a good reason for it. Yeah, if you want to further your fitness or improve your performance, then an FTP test will make sure that you're racing and riding and you're training at the right intensity in order to do so. So today, with that in mind, we're going to explain what an FTP test is, how to do it, whether you've got a power meter or not, and just why so many people do it so regularly. So now time for the sciencey bit. See, when we exercise, we produce something called lactic acid. This lactic acid is good in some ways, but I'm not going to confuse things here. Let's just think of it as bad stuff. And the harder we exercise, the more lactic acid we produce. This isn't good. It eventually gets to the point that we're producing lactic acid at such a rate that our bodies can't keep up versus getting rid of it. This is ultimately going to slow you down. So this point at which we start to produce lactic acid at such a fast rate is what we refer to as functional threshold power in cycling, or as you more commonly know it, FTP. This in theory is your maximal sustainable threshold power for one hour. So if you were to head out the door right now and ride your bike as hard as you could for 60 minutes until complete exhaustion, well that would be your functional threshold power. But as you get fitter, you can start to bump this FTP up, meaning you can ride harder and faster before your muscles become overwhelmed with lactic acid. And you might be watching this going, I don't have a power meter. Well, don't worry, you don't get to miss out on the fun because that's just a metric that we commonly use with power. You can alternatively do the same test, but measure your heart rate, and that will then give you your functional threshold heart rate. So what is all the fuss about? Well, the FTP test will give you your training zones. And obviously, everyone's going to be very different as it does depend on your FTP results. So if you're looking to improve your fitness or your performance, then having your personal zones will actually allow you to be able to train more efficiently. It's also hugely beneficial in terms of pacing. For example, zone three is often suggested as the intensity that you should ride a half iron distance event at. So knowing your zone three power or heart rate, training at that and also maybe racing at it, you're ultimately gonna hopefully end up with a better pace ride and an overall better result. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Well, to help explain things a little bit further, Heather and myself are actually going to be doing an FTP test today. Uh, not sure I am. Oh. Okay, even I'm not crazy enough to want to do an FTP test right now. That was a slight lie, but Heather's reaction does sum up most people's feelings about them. They are not pleasant things to do, but the rewards are well worth it. There are a number of different FTP tests out there, or equivalent now, but the most common is the 20 minute FTP test. And for those triathletes out there watching this, it pretty much gives you everything you need. To perform one, you want to start off with a 10 minute warm up, just to spin the legs, then into three lots of one minute fast cadence, still at a fairly aerobic intensity with one minute easy between. Then into five minutes spin, and then five minutes all out effort. Go as hard as you can. And then a 10 minute recovery spin, and then we're into the 20 minute FTP test, an all out effort. And then cool down for as long as you like, now it's important to record your heart rate or your power or both for the full duration and we'd recommend that you actually press lap on your bike computer so that you make sure you can easily digest the numbers afterwards or if you want to play it really safe then it can be a good idea to just start a new ride entirely. Yeah and by doing this you'll be able to easily analyse and take your average power and heart rate if that's what you're using from the test. But we're not finished there because this is obviously just your 20 minute all out power. We're here to find out your FTP, which is your projected best power over 60 minutes. So to do this, you just need to take 95% of your average power. So let's say that your average power for those 20 minutes was 200 watts. Well, if you multiply that by 0.95, you'd get a score of 190 watts. And then you're probably thinking, how do you get your training zones? Well, you'll be glad to hear that there's several websites out there which you can just input those numbers and it'll actually give you your zones. And the same goes for heart rate. So again, you can just put in your average heart rate for that time and you'll get your heart rate training zones. Well, the next 
question is where to do your FTP test, indoors or outdoors? Now, I know some people can get higher numbers on their power when they're indoors or vice versa, but that isn't really the point you need to consider. No, you should really consider where you're going to be doing the main bulk of your training. For instance, if you're going to be training a lot indoors, then you should do your FTP test indoors to make sure that, that number produced is specific to that. And then obviously the zones created are in line with that. But then when you maybe start training outdoors more, perhaps if the weather does improve, if it does at all, then you can do your FTP test outdoors. Yeah, so if you decide to go outdoors, it's the best if you can avoid the hills because going uphill tends to give you a higher power number, which sounds great, you'll get a high FTP test, but you're just gonna make life much harder for yourself because when you go back down to the flat, you're gonna to struggle to hit those numbers. So ideally, if you can find a nice flat, straight stretch of road without too many disruptions, that's the perfect place for an outdoor FTP test. Well, I think we've covered everything we can now about the FTP test, other than when you should do one. Yes, well, it's obviously designed to make sure that you're training at the correct intensity, so to check that you're not going too hard on some workouts, or maybe you're backing off when you shouldn't be. So with that in mind, it's important that you do it rather regularly. Yeah, normally we recommend testing every six weeks, give or take. But obviously, if you notice that your zones just don't feel right anymore, then it's really important that you retest and update that FTP. Yeah, when it comes to the test, it's a good idea to try and take the day beforehand fairly steady with your training and light on the day of it. You don't need to fully taper, but you do need to make sure that you're in that right mind game so you can get a really true result. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Even if you don't enjoy an FTP test, give us a thumbs up, like, hit the globe to subscribe. And if you want to see a video on some exercises of how to improve your FTP, well, just click down here. And if you'd like to see how to train with power on the bike, you can see that by clicking just down here.